All right, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday. It is the Earth Master back here about 11.04 a.m. here, California time, March 28th, 2024. Almost on the, uh, almost to the month of April here already. Goodness, time is just flying by, getting very close to the eclipse. We'll check out the cloud cover potential here in a little bit, uh, covering earthquake activity here. Got a 1.0 in California, and uh, let's see, should be another flag down here. Somewhere out here, there should be a red flag. Looks like maybe a 3.2 over here across the uh, Puerto Rico area as well. Uh, overnight, we did see some uh, further space weather activity with another M flare coming in uh, just earlier this morning. Looks like a M, uh, let's see what we had here. Around the M6 or so. Last night we've seen about an M7. These sunspots, or at least these flares, are coming off of a departing sunspot, 3615. That has been the source of numerous M flares here recently and uh, continues to stay quite complex. As we look at the latest image here, it is off on the western limb of the sun, remaining unstable in terms of complexity. We do have, uh, of course, a lingering threat here for some M and X flare activity with the continued um, complexity of that sunspot. But uh, eventually this will be further out here across the western limb and out of sight and out of mind. After that, there's not a whole lot to uh, look at in terms of uh, sunspots. There's a couple of weak sunspots out there, but really nothing of any major concern. A look at the far side sunspot. This is put out. Uh, let me go to the most recent imagery. 327. So it doesn't look like they've updated it yet. Uh, but looking out here on the far side, which is going to be over here, really doesn't show too much. There's a couple different sunspots out here. Maybe have one center disc on the. It's going to be way off the eastern limb here that will get a better view at in a couple days but it uh, doesn't look like anything major coming in there's one of those sunspots right here that will be uh, turning into the earth directed view here eventually uh, but for now we'll deal with uh, the sunspots that are visible still got a 25 percent chance for an x flare m flare at 75 and c flare around 99 percent certainty there no major roars in the forecast and as you can see not a whole lot happening up there either all right, far as earthquake activity here overnight, uh, looks like, let's see what we've got here for the latest largest movement. I did see a 5.1 out here in the Afghanistan area. Eastern Afghanistan, typical region there, 106 kilometers deep for that quake. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot back across the plate boundary, getting our typical clustering going on here across the Indonesia Islands area. That's just the crunch zone. Uh, because this is where all the uh, plates tend to collide and uh, subduct and create a whole lot of uh, movement. Uh, but for now, a lot, a lot of threes out there. It's always happening out there in that area of the world, but nothing major going on. A little earthquake off the coast here of Japan with a 3.7 and some further deep activity down in New Zealand again. Looks like uh, some surface adjustment and some deeper quakes there with that ring raised off the globe. Some older movement there from last night across the Tonga Trench. A couple earthquakes there. Fairly deep. Really haven't seen any further adjustment here today in this area, but I'm sure we will see it. Uh, most of the activity today looks like it's out, uh, out here across the South America region. A little bit kicking up here into the Middle America Trench as well with quite a few uh, threes and fours out there. Let's check out the states, see what's going on here. We did have a a 3.1 near Arcadia, Oklahoma, just outside the OKC area, outside of Edmond. This is a region that's seen uh, uh, a decent amount of earthquake activity here recently, I believe, in uh, a bunch of oil fields, at least according to this map. But if you go to the more developed map here in terms of um, housing development and whatnot, you can see this whole area has changed out here. There's still some operations it looks like uh very close to today's earthquake but um a lot of these houses are built upon older oil fields out here uh, it shows it out here it mentions it quite often across here north northeast edmond gas and oil field and you can see it's just littered with uh, 
a lot of oil fields out here. So still seeing some earthquake activity out there in Oklahoma, and that will continue for years to come. Out in Texas, a little small movement out there, really nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, looks like we did have another one overnight here. 1.8 in Connecticut area. 5, point, uh, 5 kilometers deep, it looks like, for that 1.8. Seen a handful of smaller quakes out here recently. This area, of course, you know, it is technically active in terms of the uh, uh, faults out here. There's not a whole lot of movement. This is the last seven days, last 30 days of earthquake activity. We'll show a handful of smaller quakes across the region. So, you know, you got mountain ranges, you got old fault systems. Uh, these intraplate little earthquakes here, just very common. Nothing like the west over here, though, where we see a, a lot of earthquake activity. All right, let's check out the west, see what's going on here. California, a couple smaller quakes out here today. No major swarming going on. Uh, the San Andreas Fault continues to sleep. Let's hope it continues to sleep for the, uh, for the foreseeable future. Eventually, that's not going to be the case because we will see a, a big earthquake out there one day. The uh, Cobb Mountain area around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field still seeing a, a lot of activity around the geysers. There really is no geysers out here. I don't know why they call it the geysers, but uh, this is just basically a geothermal field uh, full of these facilities that utilize the heated areas below to create energy. And there's a whole process involved in that as well, uh, which includes earthquakes. That's always common out there. Into the Pacific Northwest, a handful of smaller quakes as well. Overall, day today looks pretty quiet out here in the uh, earthquake department. Really nothing major going on. Uh, did have another 4.8 out here across the uh, divergent zone here in the Atlantic Ocean. That's going to be this earthquake right here. About 6 o'clock this morning, my time, so a few hours ago. Aside from that, uh, you know, it looks like a typical day here on this planet. Let's go check out. Uh, Iceland activity here real quick. See if we got anything going on up there. Looks like at least still one active vent going on uh, as far as eruptive activity. Let's check out the broader view here. This is the live from Iceland.is site. It does look a little bit calmer here today. With uh, There's still a little bit here, but I don't really see any fountaining going on. I don't know if this is just a temporary pause or what. Uh, but it does look like things are mellowing out. Occasional gushing there of the lava fountaining. Either way, still active, still erupting, still producing lava here. Not, uh, of course, not quite as much. But uh, yeah, definitely still active out there. Let's see if we got any new updates here from the Icelandic Met Office. This was put out yesterday, just kind of chatting about the gas pollution or the volcanic gas hazards out there current flow uh, mainly it has stopped right here of course we haven't really seen any further advancement across the southern end just getting a lot of stacking going on out here in terms of uh, filling up the land the uh, quarry area looks like uh, has been filled so we'll continue to watch it doesn't look like uh, anything major changing out there for now uh, as far as earthquake activity goes a handful of earthquakes Outside the Grindavik area, more towards the northeast. As far as GPS stations go, let's go check out the uh, Grindavik area. See if we've got any major changes going on here. Inflation's going to be... This is kind of an odd chart here, but uh, there's our latest run. He, right here is when we were going up. We lost a lot of the inflation there following the eruption, which makes sense. But we have been going back up here, it looks like, slowly. But the latest run shows a uh, kind of a droppage there. Let's see what we got for the Savart Singhi area in general. This gives us a broader view of the area below the ground. This one's, you know, obviously there's the eruption. We lost a lot of the inflation. Going pretty steady. A little bit of uptick, but it looks like we're going down now. So it'll be interesting to see what happens after this eruption stops whether we get another influx of magma from below to create further inflation or if this is it for a little while but uh we'll have to watch it definitely in day number oh i don't i don't know um 12 i think 
of the uh, eruption so far across the Iceland area. All right, severe weather out here. Not a whole lot today. Um, there is a potential, it looks like, on day four or day five, excuse me, and day six out here across these areas in the yellow. Most of the time when the Storm Prediction Center is putting out a uh, extended forecast here with this 15% chance, that's basically, uh, you know, time to be weather aware because things could be uh, taking shape here in terms of severe potential on day five, day six. Again, that's going to be, it looks like, Tuesday and Wednesday next week. So we'll continue to watch that. All right, uh, far as the numerical model goes, I want to look at the uh, time frame for about the 8th here. Uh, the 8th, of course, is going to be the eclipse date. This one uh, time frame is going to be roughly in between the 12Z and the 18Z time frame. We do have a, a decent low pressure system here centered over, looks like the... Um, Uh, northern New Mexico area that's going to play a part on creating um, some excitement or creating a lot of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for a lot of annoyance I guess because there's going to be quite a bit of storminess out here a lot of cloud cover for the eclipse this is just one weather model this goes out you know to the April 8th time period Let's go check out um, this forecast here. This will show general cloud cover. I think it's updated already. Average cloud cover for the April 8th time period, which is going to be right about right about here. So I think this one here, when was this put out? I don't know if this has been updated yet or not. It's going to be close. Um in terms of viewing uh, unfortunately i think you know for the totality totality line it looks like it's going to be covered at least in this weather model as i've said in the past couple updates this is uh you know ways out there nothing set in stone until probably about 72 hours out uh, so seven a couple days just prior to the eclipse time period which is april 8th here next month um, you know none of this is set in stone but each weather model has been showing some type of trend uh, towards wetter weather out there in Texas and more so around the April 8th time period with that low pressure system interacting with some Gulf moisture that could just make for a very sloppy and messy day and lots and lots of cloud cover out there so we'll continue to watch it and report back on it uh, this is something I'm paying close attention to, and I'm sure millions of other people are as well. You know, the great American eclipse out here, it's going to be heading over a lot of population density out here, and people are flying all over the world out to Texas, Oklahoma, and other areas here in the States to view this eclipse. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to be, um, you know, potentially disappointed. But don't make any plans on these long-range models. They can They can change. But these are just computer models that give us a good indicator of what pe what could be happening around that time period. And depending on how quick this low pressure system is, is going to tell us how quick this uh, clearing will happen behind it. Now it looks like maybe a little bit later, late afternoon, around 6 o'clock or so, things start to clear out. But really, um, you know, it's that's too close of a window to... Uh, to decide clearing out at least here in texas a lot of this moisture is heading up north to the northeast and that will uh, obviously cover cover up the um eclipse line the totality line which kind of runs off in this direction here so we'll watch it folks um if it's clear i'm driving out there i'll be set up live streaming the event if it's cloudy and rainy i will probably not go out there Unfortunately, you know, I, I would love to see the total eclipse again. I seen the last one there in 2017 up in Madras, Oregon. It's a surreal experience, something that you will never forget. Uh, just to see the sun get blacked out and then see the stars in the middle of the day is pretty crazy. You know, it still sticks with me. So um, we'll watch it. We'll definitely report back on it here, folks. 
And as far as Yellowstone goes, here's, yeah, what do we got? This is going to be the, uh, this looks like a distant earthquake. I wonder if that's the Oklahoma or not. Nah, I don't know if that's Oklahoma or not. Let me see. That was at 8 o'clock, 8.07. Yeah, I don't know. This earthquake right here looks like it's uh, in Yellowstone somewhere, centered maybe over across the eastern area of the park. I'm really not seeing anything showing up here across Yellowstone on the USGS map. These are older earthquakes here from yesterday. One from today, a point one, but I guarantee you a point one's not going to give that signal. It looks like something may be happening over here, um, but uh, nothing up on the map yet. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Um, I will be bringing this. What do we got going on here? I see a little spike of an earthquake there across Japan. Um, I need to bring the stream down for a little bit. So if the stream is down when you're checking it, I will get it back up here. I got to do a few updates on it and replace a fan. One of my fans have uh, dropped off. I keep this thing running 24-7. And I have um, ever since I got this updated computer, uh, but it looks like one of the fans have stopped and I got to keep this system running cool if I'm going to be running 24 seven here on the live stream and making videos and all sorts of stuff here. So I got to keep it cool. Otherwise it could burn up and that would not be good. So I will be bringing the stream down, blowing it out, putting a new fan in and uh, then we'll bring it back up here in a little bit. Enjoy. Your Thursday. Thursday, excuse me. I got hiccups all of a sudden. Perfect time to go. Uh, Friday, right around the corner tomorrow, folks. So we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later this afternoon uh, once we get the stream back up and running. Take care, folks.